Recap of round 3 in the European Chess Club Cup against one of the best players in the world from China, Grandmaster, 2764 rating. We have, ladies and gentlemen, Wei Yi. Hello everyone and welcome back. So today I'm thrilled to bring you the recap of round 3 from the European Chess Club Cup and let me tell you, this is a match you will not want to miss. In this round I faced none other than Grandmaster Wei Yi, China's number one and one of the best players in the world. Wei Yi is an absolutely powerhouse, currently ranked higher even than the reigning world champion Grandmaster Ding Li Ren. I actually played alongside Wei Yi in the 2010 World Championship until age of 12 in Greece where I was the top ranked player followed closely by Grandmaster Dude Jean Kirtsuf and of course Grandmaster Wei Yi himself and now over a decade later we are meeting across the board again so make sure you still until the end will I be able to pull off the impossible in this intense match hit the like button and subscribe my channel if you are enjoying these rip cups and let's get into the game so i played with the black pieces wow it was absolutely amazing match we played against alkaloid in the first board we have grandmaster uh, arjun arigaisi that cross 2800 in this tournament can you believe it against viktor michalevsky in the second board we have Wei Yi against me and let's see the game and of course after this uh, recap we will see and uh, understand how our team finished maybe we will do the unbelievable and won against alkaloid or maybe we will lose or maybe a draw let's see so e4 c5 i'm playing against him and knight of three d6 d4 c takes d4 knight takes d4 knight f6 knight c3 and a6 the knight of variation and i can tell you that way himself is playing this opening with the black pieces so you know for me it was like unbelievable to play against such an incredible player and you know one of my videos in my youtube channel you know were about him is just unbelievable player because he won like just one of the most beautiful games ever against Bruzun with white pieces also in the Sicilian opening. So, you know, I'm just playing against him this one and I'm telling you know what, if you want to win me, I really want to learn from you. So, let's see. So, after a6, he played a move bishop g5 and I can tell you that I, I was looking about this uh, move in my preparation and I thought that I will play the move e6. And here he played a move queen f3. And before the game, my very good uh, partner and friend, Grandmaster Ori Kobo, that is playing uh, in this match against Yu Yang Yi, also from China in the board number three, he said to me, you know what? Before the game, look about queen f3 in Nidorf after bishop g5 e6. And you know, Ori Kobo is like a magician. He knows what he's telling me, right? And, and I, I was looking about queen f3. Uh, you know, in, in this surprisingly um, sequence, and I play the move knight bd7, long castle, and now I play the move queen c7, and as you can see, I played it very fast until now. And here queen g3 was also in my preparation, and now bishop e7. The point here that after b5, uh, I think bishop takes b5 is a very interesting uh, sacrifice. After a takes b5, knight d takes b5 and here after queen b7 there is interesting move rook takes d6 the point here that after bishop takes of course knight takes d6 with a, a check uh, and he's taking the queen of course winning position absolutely and here if i'm not taking the the rook on d6 the next move will be rook hd1 with e5 it's very complicated position and it's really scary i must admit so i didn't want to, to go for it and after queen g3 i just played the move bishop e7 and here he played the move a3 really nice move and he played it after six minutes of thoughts and maybe it's it was like uh, some you know like some psychological uh, key 
and uh, you know like skill that he has he playing a3 and it feels like maybe he's not uh, prepared in this position but of course uh, it was uh, you know like just a funny thing to to think about because of course such a player 2763 rating uh, of course familiar very good with his uh, position so i played the move b5 here after bishop takes b5 I have a takes b5, knight d takes b5, queen b7, and here after rook takes d6, I just can go, I don't know, just castle, right? Because in the last variation, the bishop was on f8, right? And here he's on e7, while uh, in the last variation he was on f8, and now we just castle, and black is doing perfectly here, right? So, uh, after b5, he played the move f4, and here I played the move rook to b7, b8, of course. So bishop b7, interesting uh, move to play, and I'm not sure what what he, he wants to play here. I thought maybe bishop takes b5, uh, but a takes b5, knight d b5, but queen b6 here. And, and here knight takes d6 uh, is not good because the queen is not um, protecting the square anymore after f4, right? So this position looks very strong for black. And uh, so yeah, bishop b7, I'm not sure why I didn't play this move, right? Bishop takes f6, for example, probably knight takes f6, queen g7, rook g8, queen h6, and here, I don't know, maybe long castle, and that's it. We have two bishops uh, for the pawn, and it looks very strong, because this pawn on e4 is not good. Uh, and on thread, the rook on g2, you know, is looking for it, because bishop d3 is not good. Also knight g4, some jumps here, uh, looks very promising for black. I really like this position for black. Probably uh, black is totally fine. Maybe king b8, rook c8. Uh, some plan like this, so yeah, I really liked uh, this position to play with the black pieces. So uh, bishop b7, maybe this was the best move for me, uh, but I played the move rook b8. I thought that I really want uh, to play very fast, because white will try to play bishop d3, rook h e1 and e5, and if I'm not doing something very fast, I will be in trouble, big trouble. And it's playing the move bishop e2 very fast, and now I'm playing b4, a takes b4, rook takes b4, and here there was a very interesting line, h6, you know, h6 was very strong, and I can tell you that after the game, Wei Yi said to me that h6 was the best move in the position. And the point here that after bishop h4, I'm just taking the pawn on b4, and here e5 will not work uh, as it worked in the game, because now d takes e5, f takes e5, and just knight takes e5, and the bishop here on h4 and cannot go to f4, right? So this position is totally fine for me, uh, obviously uh, better for black here. So h6 was a very strong and clever one. After bishop takes f6, probably just bishop takes f6, and the pawn on b4 is hanging, right? And black is totally fine here uh, with two bishops, short castle, rook takes b4, queen a5, bishop b7, you know, just uh, attack, right? So f5 probably should be the move, but here, I don't know, maybe bishop e5 with knight f6, uh, looking very strong with this uh, bishop on f uh, on e5, right? So yeah, he's very controlling everything here, right? So yeah, rook b4 was uh, the first mistake into the game, and now he's playing move e5, and and, and, and as you can see, he's just playing very fast uh, with confidence. And I was like, oh no, he's this prep. So d takes e5, f takes e5, and I'm queen takes e5, and as you can see, I thought uh, until, you know, every single move I thought, because I, I am not familiar with this position, and I was not sure what to play. So after knight takes e5, I thought he will play the move bishop f4, and after knight fd7, I thought knight takes e6. Yeah, I saw this line, uh, f takes e6, and now just rook takes d7. Uh, bishop takes d7, bishop e5, attacking this queen, queen g7, bishop h5, it seems really dangerous for me, and I really didn't want to go for it, so I played the move queen takes e5. And here the point that after bishop f5, I have, I have bishop f4, sorry, I have queen a5, with some ideas of queen a1, and you know, this is not so easy for him, right, and also castle, so black is totally fine here, I thought knight b3, and now I thought to play queen a5, and uh, yeah, I'm attacking this bishop on f4, queen g6 also, knight h5, looking very strong for black, I don't have any things uh, to worry about, right? So after queen takes e5, is playing very fast knight to c6, queen takes g3, h takes g3, rook b6, knight e7, king e7, and now bishop to d2. 
and is playing very fast. He has 1 hour and 21 minutes on the clock. Can you believe? Grandmaster Wei Yi, first rank in China with 1 hour 20 minutes on the clock against 49 minutes of mine. And we are already in 19 moves. So first of all, you can learn that such a player knows everything. He really strong in the preparation, right? He knows how to play until 19 moves. It's incredible. And let's see the position. So the position is very complex, right? We have one pawn up, but white has two bishops, right? So let's do the evaluation of position. We have like uh, how much pawns we have? We have five pawns against four pawns, but, but white has two bishops, right? So, and very nice bishops. They are looking very nice here, right? So what are the plan for, for white? He wants to play knight a4 with, I don't know, bishop b4, bishop a5, something around this one, and also g4, g5 threats, and the pawn on h7 will be weak if I will go uh, with his rook on h8. And also don't forget that I have some problems with the king. How can I escape with the king to a better and safety position? So, for example, let's let's see. Bishop b7 is, is not so good move, in my opinion at least, because knight a4, and after rook c6, some bishop b4 check, king e8, and now some rook h4, with bishop f3, rook hd4, you know, and also the rook on h8 is not working and is not in the game. So I don't know what to do here, right? So after bishop d2, I played this move, rook e8. So the point here was just to bring the rook into the game and I really want to uh, put king f8, king g8 and the king will be on safe place. And if I will manage to do it, I, I will feel like that, you know, I have one pawn up, there is double pawns here and that's it, I'm winning, right? But it's not so easy because we are playing against one of the best players in the world. He's playing a move knight a4 and as you can see, he thought 45 minutes on this move it's something that for me it's unbelievable right uh, and i can tell you that it was very surprisingly because you know nowadays i'm i'm also a coach uh, in chess uh, I'm, I'm i'm such a mentor right so i'm learning a lot how to help my students and during my uh, my lessons and my you know uh, things that i'm doing to help my students i understand that Every player that think more than 20 minutes on one move, it will be mistake. And why it's mistake? Because the player think so much and he doesn't know what to do. And it's extremely not good in the psychological uh, issues, right? Because you mean, oh, I don't know what to do. And I think, and I think, uh, but I don't find anything. So if you didn't find anything in the 20 minutes, you will not find in the 45, right? So Wei is playing after 45 minutes and now I'm up than him on time. It's unbelievable. Knight a4 was played. Rook b8. And now we play the move rook h4. I think very strong move. He's bringing the rook into the game with some bishop b4 threat and also rook d4, right? On this file. Uh, and also something about rook dh1. Also, this pawn on h7 will be weak after g4, g5. So it's very interesting move by a way. I play the move king f8 and now g4. So the threat here is g5 and the pawn on h7 will collapse, right? So I play the move knight e4. So the point here that after h6, there is g5 move. And after h takes g5, just bishop takes g5. And this is extremely interesting for white because, you know, the, the next moves will be probably rook dh1 and rook h8 with rook h7, right? It's, it's very complicated because I don't have nothing to do, right? For example, bishop b7 is losing absolutely immediately because rook d7, knight x and rook h8 checkmate on the board. So I don't have moves to play here. For example, if I'm playing the move knight e5, so just knight c5, he will come to e4, right? So my pieces are really, really passive here, while white is really strong and initiative. For example, king g8, very bad because rook dh1 with rook h8 checkmate threats. So yeah, I'm in trouble, big trouble. But here 
I, I managed to, to find a move knight e4. I'm attacking this bishop and I tell myself, you know what, if you if you're attacking this pawn on h7, I will just take the bishop on d2, after rook takes d2, something around, I don't know, I thought maybe knight f6 to play, maybe rook b4, and that's it, because if you're losing the two bishops advantage, everything will be fine here. Two pawns, two double pawns, knight f6, e5, bishop e6, um, knight f... bishop e6, yeah. And king e7, something around this one, rook b4 also, I have a lot of options here for black and also g5 maybe, should be very strong. So yeah, rook h7 was not a good move for him and he's playing the move bishop e3. And now, of course, there is two bishops here and also attacking the pawn on h7. So here if I'm playing the move king g8, it's, it will be probably a trouble because um, probably g5 I think and rook dh1. Or maybe also bishop g, uh, bishop f3, sorry, attacking this knight, and if the knight is going, bishop c6, and I have some problems here, right, in this diagonal. So it's not so easy to understand what to play, and also, don't forget about this line, rook dh1 with g5, the pawn on h7 is really weak. So he's playing here the move, I'm, I'm playing, sorry, the move h6 here, just defend the pawn on h7 and going forward. So now bishop f3. The point here after g5 that just can take the pawn and after bishop takes, h takes, rook h8, king e7 and black is totally fine here with two pawns up and a winning position. But he played with bishop f3 and I must admit I forgot something here. I forgot it. I thought in the beginning of the uh, this position that I will play the move knight where? I think to... Yeah, knight g5 is a problematic because of bishop c6, right? And here, after rook d8, just bishop, I don't know, bishop here, takes rook h8, king e7, just takes, takes, and knight c5. Yeah, and I'm losing this knight on d7, I'm losing the game, of course. And if I'm playing the move rook e7, just bishop c5, right? Oh, bishop g5 also, and checkmate on the board, and also bishop c5. J just in case, right? And also this one is checkmate on the board. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm in problematic uh, situation. Here if I'm playing the move um, knight df6, I thought, and I missed this one, that he's playing the move g5 here. And after h takes g5, just rook takes e4, and this one looking very bad for me, right? Knight takes, bishop takes, and two pieces for rook, and you know, the white pieces are really, really strong and initiative here. But if I'm playing knight takes g5, there is bishop c6, and I have problems with rook on e8. So I must play the move bishop b7, probably, because rook e7, just, I don't know, uh, rook d8 check, knight is 8, and bishop c5, and yeah, the game is over, rook e8, checkmate uh, very soon. So, so yeah, it's, it's losing, uh, so knight df6, I missed the g5 move, but yeah, I had also the opportunity after knight g5, bishop c6, bishop b7, just give up the exchange, and I have to pawns for this one, but I was not sure about his position, I must admit, takes, takes, rook h8, king e7, takes here, knight takes, and I was not sure, knight c5 maybe, who knows if I'm doing here a draw, I don't know, these pawns are running, right, so yeah, it's it's problem, it's problem, I have a problem here, so after bishop f3, I managed to, to bring myself to play the move f5, after 10 minutes of thought, and in this position I had only 16 minutes on this on the clock, uh, against 25 of way e. He played bishop takes e4, f takes e4, and now knight c3, bringing the knight back and attacking the pawn on e4. So it was a very nice for me that now there is no two bishops for him, these advantage are just gone for him, but I have problems. The bishop on c8 is not working, the rook on e8 is not working, the knight on d7 doing nothing, so what can I do? Knight f6, just uh, defend the pawn on e4, but now g5, h takes g5, bishop takes, and now I play the move e3. And this was maybe the best move, and in the position and also in the game. Because after e3, I can tell you that my opponent missed this. And he said to me after the game that e3 was the key moment on this game because, you know, I have one pawn up, right? But if I'm playing something around bishop b7, for example, just bishop takes f6, g takes f6, and I don't know, rook h8, probably, right? And I have problems, right? Rook d7. So yeah, king g7 just takes, takes, and rook d7. And yeah, it's just losing. King f7, um, how can I? Yeah, rook d7 check and taking this rook and of course this bishop. So I'm just losing the game, right? So bishop b7 cannot be played. So how can I play? I don't have moves. And I understand that my, my king is not safe here, 
rook f1, knight xc4, rook h8, so much threats here. So I'm playing the move e3, I'm just pushing the pawn and, I, and I'm telling my opponent, you know what, if you want this pawn, grab it, grab it. But if you grab it, I have some time. I will play the move bishop b7 now. And then bishop on g2, rook bd8, knight d5, I have some time. And he's not giving me a checkmate. And this position, it's very equal, you know, it's very uh, close to a draw. So after e3, he took the knight, g takes, and playing the move knight e4. And I tell you guys, I saw this line, I saw it, and I played the move e2. After four minutes of thought, with eight minutes on the clock, I'm playing the move e2, and I saw so many lines here. Let's show you. Rook h8, check, king e7. If I'm playing the move rook g, uh, king g7, sorry, rook takes e8, I thought I will promote the queen with check, king takes d1, and here I thought to play e5, because now bishop g4 is a threat, but here there is a move king to c1. And I was not sure about his position because 96 is the threat and now the only move rook b4 but here knight f6 king takes rook c8 and I really didn't like to go for it you know probably a draw but not so easy right so I didn't want to defend like this and after rook h8 I played the move king e7 so rook h7 check king f8 coming back and here rook d h1 and now I play the move f5 so here there is a drama. Let I let me show you. So for for example, he played move knight c3, and after it uh, there were, there was fine for black, but it's, it was very interesting to see about the move um, knight d6 here. And the point here that rook d8, rook h8 check, king e7, and now rook 1h7 is a blunder because I will not take this knight on d6. I will play the move king f6. Slowly move, don't forget, we have here pawn. Promoting e with checkmate, right? It's unbelievable, ladies and gentlemen, unbelievable. Rook h8, h6, just king g5, and that's it. I'm going for the king and I'm winning the position because this knight on d6 is also under attack. So yeah, knight d6 was not a good choice. Oh no, sorry, knight d6, rook d8, rook h8. But here after king e7, there is a rook takes d8, just take, and yeah, it should be better for black. I, th I saw this line uh, during the game. Uh, what else? I think here was interesting knight takes c6, uh, c8, sorry. After rook b6, a rook b takes c8, sorry. Yeah, rook a7, but of course black is totally fine here, probably, right? Rook g king g8 uh, to, to avoid rook h8 checkmate, but should be fine here. You know, also, I can tell you that in this position, I remember now that I thought rook e1 is a very clever move, but f5, knight d6, rook d8, take rook takes rook takes e2 and now just rook c6 and this is what i also uh, saw in the game and i still to my i told to myself it will be fine uh, and probably i will do a draw here but he played with rook dh1 and now f5 and now knight c3 was played and here i was like calm a little bit because the knight is not coming into the attack and i have some time and i played the move rook to b7 and now knight takes e2 and now rook g7 i really wanted to play the move rook g7 to provide my king to come to f7 with e5, f4, bishop, G, bishop b7, attacking the pawn on g2, and this one was really nice for me. Knight f4 with 9 seconds on, it, on his clock, he played this move, knight f4, in, in, in 36 move uh, into the game. I played move king f7, now king d2, e5, knight d3, and now bishop b7, rook 1, h5, very strong move, bishop e4 just, uh, you know, uh, protect the pawn on f5 now g3 another very strong move i think and now i took the rook on h7 uh, it was the last move uh, with three seconds on the clock i took the rook rook takes king g6 rook a7 and now bishop takes d3 and yeah i don't have something to do because after rook e6 just knight c5 and so much threats here right um so yeah i, I was not sure maybe maybe i can play here but it's double edge right i can lose this one also so uh, yeah, so I played, there's bishop takes d3, c takes d3, and rook e6, and I offer a draw because this position, it's totally draw. I thought that if you will take with king on d3, rook e6 maybe will be interesting for me, uh, with some chances to win, because I have two pawns here, and they're somewhere, they're can running, right? King h5, king g4, king f3, maybe f4, e4, I don't know, I, I, I dreamed about maybe to play this, but after c takes d3, rook e6, I offered a draw, and my opponent, 
uh, one of the best players in the world, Grandmaster Wei Yi, um, rank number eight in the world. Yeah, he agreed to a draw. And I finished my, uh, you know, best result in my life, in my career until now, draw against a Wei Yi. It's, uh, you know, like for me, it's unbelievable achievement with the black pieces. Um, so, yeah, let's uh, talk about uh, our, uh, oh, sorry, I forgot about it another time, about our team. So, how our team finished. So, the first board, we have Arjun Arigaisi against Grandmaster Viktor Michalewski. Viktor was with white pieces and uh, the result was uh, that uh, Arjun won the game. I can tell you that Grandmaster Viktor Michalewski um, did a lot of lessons to Arjun. He was his coach uh, so many years ago, but he was and he know him very strong and he told me that he will be one of the best players in the world and today is number three in the world with 2,800. Can you believe it? It's just unbelievable, right? Uh, the Indian players are doing just perfect. I played a, a draw against uh, Wei Yi. Third board, we have Grandmaster Ori Kobo that uh, drew against Yu Yang Gi with the white pieces. And with the four board, we have Grandmaster Along Griffith with the black pieces. Did a draw against Aravind uh, Chitambaram. Yes, I hope I pronounced it right. And also in the fifth board, we have Grandmaster Evgeny Posny with the white pieces. Drew against Narayanan from India. And in the last board, Grandmaster Alexander Husman with the black pieces drew against Alexander Indic. So we lost the match. Minimal, minimum, right? Three and a half against two and a half against one of the best teams in the world. Wow, it was a tough match. I really, really want to tell you guys thank you very much for watching. Everyone, I hope you enjoyed this intense match against one of the best players in the world, Wei Yi. Uh, this game was a real test of skill, strategy, and mental endurance. And I hope you found it as thrilling as I. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to stay updated. Your support means a lot and it helped me keep bringing your recaps these unforgettable games. So tomorrow I will be back with another exciting round as the tournament continues. So don't forget to hit the notification bell, sorry, to catch it as soon as it's up. See you in the next video. Bye. Bye.